Shalom, shalom. I'd like to start off by giving all praises, all honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Citations to you brothers out there to the four corners of the earth, teaching in truth and sincerity. All right. I just wanted to do a brief lesson, you know, on the history of on King James, okay, the sixth and the first of Scotland and England and also Ireland, okay? And for the uh, for the reference out there to make the correct statement, um, King James was a so-called black man, all right? He wasn't no, uh, no so-called white man. He wasn't an Edomite, okay? Cause that's what a lot of you, uh, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, you know, you like to try to throw that out there and try to say, um, King James is a white man, you know, King James is a homosexual, you know, or King James slept with his mother. No, that's what the white man says. And also, um, that came from a man named Sir Anthony Weldon, a man that was under King James, you know, that got jealous over him. And uh, he made that false statement about him. So you can look him up. If you want the correct information about that, okay? His name is Sir Anthony Weldon, okay? He was under King James, and he made that story up, all right? But what you see here is a real, a more accurate depiction. This is uh, also, this is what King James looks like, okay? Not the white man, not that so-called white man that you're about to see when I read this biography, okay? Now, we know through the Renaissance era that they, um had this thing where they set up iconoclasm, okay? It's happened around in the dark ages. The white man, uh, 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 this is the time when we ruled Europe. It's around the dark ages. But when Edom came back in power, they started uh, uh, taking all the, our images of nobility down, you know? Okay. So I want to get right into... The biography. Okay. Now, what you see on the right hand side is this devil. Okay. This is what uh, iconoclasm is. Okay. This is what they did through the Renaissance era. All right. The rebirth. And it was the rebirth of Edom. Okay. So don't mind that picture. Okay. So I'm going to read this little biography. It says, James the Sixth and the First. June 19, 1566 through March 27, 1625, was the King of Scotland. As James the Sixth from July 24, 1567, and the King of England and Ireland. As James the First. From the Union of the Scottish and the English Crowns on March 24, 1603 until his death. The kingdoms of Scotland and England were individual sovereign states with their own parliaments, judi judi judiciary, and laws, though both were ruled by James and personal union. James was the son of Mary, Queen of Scots, and a great and a great great grandson of Henry the Seventh, King of England and Lord of Ireland. Though both his parents uniquely positioning him to eventually accede to all three thrones, James succeeded to the Scottish throne at the age of 13 months after his mother Mary was compelled to abdicate, no, abdicate, abdicate in his favor. Four different regents governed during his minority, which ended officially in 1578, though he did not gain full control of his government until 1583. In 1603, he succeeded the last Tudor monarch of England and Ireland, Elizabeth I, who died without issue. He continued to reign in all three kingdoms for 22 years, a period known as the Jacobean era. After him until his death in 1625, at the age of 58, after the union of the crowns, he based himself in Ireland, Slot, in England, the largest of the three realms. From 1603, only returning to Scotland, 
once in 1617 and styled himself King of Great Britain in Ireland. He was a major advocate of a single parliament for England and Scotland. In his reign, the plantation of Ulster and British colonization of the Americas began. At 57 years and 246 days, James' reign in Scotland was longer than those of any of his predecessors. Predecessors, He achieved most of his aims in Scotland, but faced great difficulties in England, including, including the gunpowder plot in 1605 and repeated conflicts with the England, English Parliament under James the Golden Age. Of the Elizabethan literature and drama continued with writers such as, as William Shakespeare, also was a so-called black man, John Don Ben Johnson, John Don Ben Johnson, and Sir Francis Bacon, contributing to a flourishing literature culture. James himself was talented, was a talented scholar, the author of the works of such as Demonology, The True Law of the Free Monarchies, and Basilicon Theron. He sponsored the translation of the Bible that will later be named after him. The authorized King James Version, 1611. You know, we know that uh, he authorized the uh, King James 1611 Bible. You know, he had it translated from the Hebrew into Greek. Okay. Now, Sir Anthony Welder claimed that James has been termed the wisest fool in Christendom, an effort associated with the character with his character ever since. Since the later half of the 20th century, historians have tended to revise James' reputation and treat him as a serious and thoughtful monarch. And uh, Anthony Weldon, Sir Anthony Weldon, that's the dude I was talking about, the slander on um, King James' name, okay? Um, yeah, this is another uh, little biography on King James, okay? Uh, I just wanted to go look at this timeline, you know. Uh, I don't know how accurate it is, you know, but, you know, it may seem pretty accurate. It says, 1567, King James VI, aged 13 months, is crowned at the Church of the Holy Rood, beside Stirling Castle. Mary, Queen of Scots, which is his mother, flees to England following the defeat of her army at the Battle of the Langside near Gla Glasgow. 1578. James VI takes over a government with his regent, James Douglas. 1582, establishment of the University of Edinburgh by royal charter. 1587, Mary is beheaded by the order of Queen Elizabeth I of England. Uh, 1592, Presby Presbyterianism becomes the establishment from the church government in Scotland by the Act of Parliament. 1600, the Gregorian calendar is adopted in Scotland. The year begins on the 1st of January instead of the 25th of March. 1603, the Union of the Crowns, James VI of Scotland, becomes James I of England. 1614, John Napier invents logarithms and publishes a book promoting their use in mathematics. 1618, James VI forces episcopacy on the Church of Scotland through the Five Articles of Perth. 1625, James VI dies. His son Charles first becomes the King of England and Scotland. Now, you know, I don't know how true this is, you know, as far as this whole timeline, you know. I know some of it that I read in other biographies that, uh, that's on point, you know. But who knows, uh, Esau will be trying to fool around with certain things. But what I wanted to point out was I wanted to bring out is in 1625 is what James VI dies. His son Charles I becomes the king of England and Scotland, right? Now, I wanted to go into uh, uh, his great grandson, which is who? King Charles. The little uh, his, his nickname was the, the little black boy. Okay. Now let's see what a picture what he look will look like. See, see, that's, see, I had everything set up. All right. This will be an accurate, this is more, this is the uh, more accurate depiction of what King Charles looked like. Uh, the second, okay. King James' great, great grandson. All right. This is 
King Charles, okay? The word steward, I want to read a little bit of this. It says the word steward comes from the old Nordish root sewer, which means black. Wow, okay. Start, steward is the same word as swarthy, which means black in old English. <laughs> wow. There once was a steward land of kings in England. The name of the founding ancestor was steward, which means black man. You see? You see how we have all the... We have everything in our face, but you just got to do the research and study behind the things, you know. It says, in this post, we featured the original painting of the Stuart, kings of England and Scotland, King Charles II, also lovingly known as the Black Boy of England by his subjects. His comrade and the celebrated name of the Black Boy Inn found all over the British Isle. King Charles II was a black man. Many of his surviving paintings falsely depict him as a so-called white man. In clear con contradiction to the famous description of the Jolly King. Okay, iconoclasm. However, the picture posted immediately below, one can see one as contemporary paintings of King Charles II, Mary Black, Boy of England. The picture invites all to decide why King Charles Stuart have been called the Black Boy. All right, King Charles Stuart II, 1630 to 1685. The eldest surviving son of Charles I and Henrietta Maria of France, daughter of Henry VI of France. The future Charles II was born May 29, 1630 at St. James Palace, London. The second child of the marriage, he replaced an elder brother James who had died shortly after his birth. It was said that when Charles was born in 1630, he was nicknamed the Black Boy by his mother, Queen Henrietta Maria. Because of his dark and swarthy appearance. Okay. So that's another thing, you know. King James, uh, great, great, uh, King James' grandson. That's what I'm going to say. Yeah, it's a lot. King James' grandson, okay, was King Charles Stuart II, the little black boy. Okay. And you can look him up as well. He pops up. But look what they did. Okay. It even says it. Modern European painters try to hide the racial identity of it, of this jolly king by depicting such fancy slop, such fantasy as it is supposed to be low. Come on, man. Is he swarthy? Is he a steward? Cause we just read what it meant. It means black. No, he's not. You see, they did everything to copy. They just uh uh, they just whitened everything. Okay. Because. Ultimately, what? The white man is the damn devil. He's the deceiver. Okay. Just like they covered up uh, 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 the kings in the Renaissance era, ultimately, they cover uh, who? Of our great king, Yahweh Shai. Okay. Who they ignorantly called Jesus Christ. They cover his face up. Okay. They made the angels in the Bible uh, also appear to be so called white people, which we know as Edomites. You know, they try to tell you God. Is a so-called white man, you know. They try to um, say the prophets, the apostles, and things like that. And the men in the Bible are what so-called white men, but that's not true. That's not true according to the uh, the Holy Bible. Okay. I want to uh, pull out a, a, a scripture real quick. Um, Job nine and twenty-four. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces and the judges. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? Okay. Where and where and who is he? Okay. Well, we know who's ruling the planet Earth right now for this, this short period of time. So you eat them ice. Okay? So called white man. And this is what you were doing. You were covering up the faces with the judges. Okay? The ultimate judge uh, uh, is Yahweh Shai and Heavenly Father, um, Yahweh. But this is what you were doing, okay, in the Renaissance era. Okay? Here we go again. Another depiction of King James I of England and King James VI and the first, okay? 